Hello and welcome to this video in the lockdown learning series where we're going to be taking a look at SNAP which is probably a fairly boring topic you might think but actually it's really really useful. So this is going to be looking at ways you can save time and work more quickly and more accurately and not have some of the disasters that I've seen over the years, some of which I created, some of which I was merely a witness to. So this is really talking about SNAP which is up here. So very early on, we saw that you can turn snap on and off with this button here uh, or J on the keyboard. And I said, generally, keep snap turned on, which is if you need a rule, if you've got to have a rule for snap, you would say keep snap turned on. So we're going to look at that in a little bit more depth. So there's multiple modes of snap, and these are the controls we're going to be looking at for the most part. So the mode that you're used to seeing it in is in grid mode. Now, Cubase defaults to adapt to zoom but we're actually going to start off with it in bar mode so to understand it more clearly when it's in bar mode you can only move these parts a bar at a time so you can see the mouse is moving smoothly but the part is moving a bar at a time you've probably already discovered that there are other options so you can put it into beat move it a beat at a time or you can put it on use quantize where here now you can set the snap increment so if we set it half it will move half a bar at a time, or you could do bar, beat, half a beat, sixteenths, etc. So there you can see it's moving a small fraction. Now, recent versions of Cubase have introduced adapt to zoom, which is really helpful. So if you're zoomed in, so here I'm zoomed in and you can see it's moving a sixteenth each time. So each bar is divided up into sixteenths, and if you zoom move out, it then changes to eighths, zoom out a bit more, quarters, and so on. The furthest it goes is to bars, in case you're wondering. So even if you zoom right out, it still snaps a bar at a time. But that's that's pretty useful. To be honest, I mostly leave it on this most of the time. It's often, you know, often it's exactly what I'm after, and I can just change effectively change the snap by zooming in or out. So that works pretty well for the most part. I like that. Now, there are other modes. We'll come back to grid rel relative later on for reasons that will become apparent. It's almost as if I've planned this. Uh, but events. So events is really useful when you are working with audio. So particularly if you've been using um, audio events and you've been cutting things up and so on, and you may not be working to the grid. So we're going to look at this in a few videos time, effectively using Cubase just as a tape machine, which works really well for some people. Uh, and in that mode, the snap is just to events. So in fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off snap just to set. So you see, so we're going to use these two here, which aren't anywhere in particular. And when you're in events mode, you'll see as I drag this along, it snaps to the beginning of that event there or to that event there. So if you want to line things up, often changing to events mode works really well. And shuffle. So now shuffle is a bit is useful but it's a bit strange I don't use it that much so I'm just going to duplicate this track and add a couple here and a couple there now when you are in shuffle mode it's as if gravity pulls to the left okay so in fact I'm going to delete one of those so if I try and pull this anywhere else you can see that highlighted on screen at bar two there's this colored line here and you can't put it anywhere else other than if I put it on this track you can see it's going to end up here so I'm going to color my part in red so you can see if I move it to there it goes there we can only build on top of what's already there which can be really useful it's it's something that I've only used occasionally it also works so let's turn this one another color and change you so if we delete this part here, this one is going to fall sideways. So I'm going to click that one and delete it. And you can see there, that one has now fallen in the gap. So that gravity pulls to the left, which can be useful, particularly when you're editing up uh, long parts where you're cutting sections out. So if you're editing dialogue, etc., that can work well for that. But it takes a bit of getting used to sometimes. So I, I don't use it an immense amount. Now, cursor is really useful. So if we are working on a long audio loop as you're going to see in another video this can be really useful for cutting to that point 
So if I just turn snap off and let's say this was a long loop and I'd spent a long time finding this particular point here and I want to cut to that. If you're not careful, you can you can miss that. It's much easier. Just put it to cursor and then you can pick your scissors up and you're cutting exactly to that point. So you know you're not going to miss it even if you zoom out. So cursor can be really useful for that. And then we've got these combinations of them. Grid, events, cursor, etc. These used to be shown graphically, but now they're in text, which is possibly a better idea. It would be nice to be able to turn them on and off individually, but we can't. Now, we're going to look at grid relative in a second. So you may well be asking, why is this important? And it's partly important because if you get the length of your parts wrong, once you start duplicating them, there can be a problem. So here we have a part which looks totally fine, but actually it's slightly too long. Okay, so it's actually 15 ticks too long. And when you play it, obviously it's fine at the moment. But if we duplicate it, the next one is 15 ticks too late. And then the next one is 30 and so on. So as we keep on duplicating this, you can see it's starting to drift off. Now, I've seen this in practice. I've seen people do this and they've got different parts where they are slightly different lengths and then they don't line up. So this one might be 15 too long. The other one might be right. The other one might be you know, eight or 10 or 12 or 20 too long and so on. And then you've got all these Lego blocks, which are all different sizes and they don't fit together. So even by here, we can hear it's out. So snap and making sure your parts are the right lengths is really important. And if you have snap turned off at this zoom, it's really easy to get it wrong. So by just by turning snap on and retrimming that, you can see straight away the length is now ending in a zero and the end is at the right place and it will now duplicate perfectly normally and play as it should do. So that's why that's important. Now we're just going to look at audio. So we've got these two audio parts here and as we've seen in grid mode when you move these around they move in exactly the same way as the MIDI parts do. This is one of the real strengths of Cubase is a lot of the handling or any DAW is a lot of the handling of different kinds of parts is very similar. I've chosen two different types of audio part here just to demonstrate something so here we have this one i've called it audio long not because it's long but because it's got a, a bit of a fade in at the beginning so if we listen to this sound so it fades in a bit now if i was placing this in a track i would probably want its beginning or this part here to actually be where the beat is so i'd want the beginning to be slightly before the beat now the intuitive way to do that is to turn the grid off and then place it where you want. So we'll look at the peak and say, right, that's about where it is on the bar. So you can see the grid and the transparent wave and say, right, that's okay. That's where I want that in relation to the beat. So now when we play this, I'll turn the click on. Yeah, so that's about right. So it's just fading up and then hitting that right on the beat. Now, the problem with that is, is if you want to make another copy of it, if you turn grid on, I'm going to hold down the out key and make another copy. You can see that that copy has now been made. So it starts exactly at bar 10, which isn't what I wanted. Okay. There's three ways around this. So one way is you could turn snap off again, and then you could zoom in and go, right, that one's going to be there, which, which might be what you want, but you probably end up with it being different every time. And if you've got 50 of them to do, it's going to be a bit miserable. There are two ways, sensible ways around this. So we've seen the non-sensible way. One of the sensible ways is the mode we did not speak of earlier, grid relative. Okay, so grid relative means that your movements will be the size of the grid, but the parts won't be aligned to the grid, which doesn't make sense when you say it. But what it means is if I move this now, it will move a bar at a time. I'm going to set that to bar just to make it more straightforward. So it's going to move a bar at a time, but it's not going to mean that the beginning is at the bar. It's going to be from its current position. So you see its current position is 242109. So if I move it, it will move to 342109 like that. So it's moving a bar at a time. So if you've got anything that you've placed really carefully and you want to move it by a bar or whatever, grid relative is a great way to do it. But there's another way, and the other way is the way I use much more of the time because it means I don't have to change mode. So I'm going to go back into grid mode, double-click your audio part, 
And on your audio part, if you look at the beginning, you will see this S and the S is the snap point. So by default, it's at the beginning of the audio file because that makes sense, but you can put it anywhere you like in the audio file. So we're gonna drag this over to where we've decided we want that snap point to be and handily it actually snaps to it because that's where our play position is. And now, even in grid mode, it's snapping to this, not to the beginning of the file. So it's gonna mean that this will be the bit that aligns to the grid. That's what I use all the time on these kind of things because then, say, I don't have to worry about coming in and out of different snap modes. So now we're in grid mode here. You can see it's snapping with that peak on the bar in this case. I can do that. And if I want to make another copy, I can just hold down the out key, drag it to its new home. And you can see that at its new home, it's done exactly the right thing. Yeah. So that's my top tip for audio files. Now it would be easy to think, well, this one here, this is just a short one. So again, these are just from the Alan Morgan um, media, which is included. So it's in media bay if you want to play around with these. But looking at this, we've got the same deal again. Now, yeah, you could trim the beginning off, but you might not want to. But even on something like this, you might say, well, even when I've trimmed the beginning off, so if I turn snap off and just trim the beginning off of that, I don't know whether I want that one to be where it snaps to or that one. Maybe I want it to be where everything's come in. And again, just double click it. We can zoom in where that snap point is and then maybe just move it a bit later. And this kind of thing can be really useful just for getting things aligned. So particularly when you've got percussive sounds, etc. but you can get everything exactly where you want. And apart from at the very beginning, which generally it's not a great idea to start your song at bar one, beat one because of this, but everywhere else, if we turn grid back on, you'll see now this snaps, it looks fine. It works absolutely fine, but if we zoom in, you can see it's just a little bit before, and that's exactly where I wanted it. So there you go. That's my guide to why Snap is important and the different modes and all of these, once you get used to them, can save you a huge amount of time in terms of fixing things and being creative rather than spending time worrying about how you're going to achieve things. So spend a bit of time practicing with these and you'll find different ways of using them and they'll fit into your creation workflow as it were so i hope you found that useful and i'll see you again soon